It's Monday, September 6, 2021. I'm Jonathan Lau, and this is 5 Minutes of Proof, a weekly analysis of the science behind ozone therapy. Today, we're looking at an article from the International Journal of Medical Science that was published in 2011. It comes to us from Turkey, and it's entitled Ozone Therapy and Hyperbaric Oxygen Treatment in Lung Injury and in Septic Rats. As I went through and read this study, um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, so let's jump in and take a look at what happened. In spite of the advanced antibiotic therapies, supportive treatments, and technological f- facilities, sepsis continues to be a clinical entity with high morbidity and mortality. Those of you who have dealt with this know that. Now, you may or may not be familiar with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, so let's take a look at what it is. It's a well-established therapeutic approach, increasing oxygen concentration in all tissues, improving blood flow in compromised organs, stimulating angiogenesis, increasing antioxidant enzyme expression, and aiding in the suppression of infections by enhancing white blood cell action. That's a really quick review of what it is. Interestingly, OT, ozone therapy, and HBO, hyperbaric oxygen, seem to exhibit similar mechanisms of action to some extent, i.e. stimulating antioxidant enzyme systems and enhancing oxygen delivery to tissues. Nothing new there if you followed along with us before. Um, I highlighted this. I wanted you to know uh, what the weight of the rats were, 200 to 250 grams, um, because I like to always uh, see what the dose is that they were giving to these animals. So here's what they did. Uh, They had four groups. They had a control group, a sham group, a hyperbaric oxygen, and an ozone therapy group. And for the hyperbaric oxygen, they administered two times a day with at 2.8 ATM pressure with 100% O2 inhalation for 90 minutes. Ozone therapy carried out by IP intraperitoneal injections of ozone gas. So it broke down, I did the math, to about 3 mLs per rat of 60 microgram per mL ozone. So concentration of 60 micrograms per ml. And uh, if, if we just do the math again, um, it's six mLs per pound is about what they were giving intraperitoneally if the rat had been a pound. Um, so good dose of ozone, quite a bit of ozone. Uh, it's something to, to note again and to keep in mind as we move forward. So rats in the control hyperbaric and ozone therapy group actually were received the um the infection the uh the the uh, control group did but the sham group did not so the sham group only received saline injections the whole time so that was not injected uh, so what did we see well we saw that first here antioxidant and en- enzyme values which they're looking at SOD and GSH-PX, um, were found to decrease in the control animals, so in the, in the antibiotic group. Um, but compared to the control, ozone therapy group had significantly higher levels for both SOD and the GSH-PX. So that means the antioxidant levels were higher with ozone therapy, and in fact, significantly higher than the hyperbaric group, um, which is a good thing. Um, They also noted some other things here that ozone therapy was able to reverse these changes significantly, whereas hyperbaric reduced only the TNF-A level. So at the end of the day, you find, um, if you go look at these charts and and look at this study, that ozone therapy actually had an improved effect over antibiotics and over hyperbaric oxygen therapy as well. The increase in the antioxidant enzyme activities, the suppression of IL-1B levels, that's interleukins, um, and the improvement in histiological outcome were much more apparent in ozone therapy than in hyperbaric oxygen treatment group. That's a win for ozone therapy. Um, So ozone reacts with polyunsaturated fatty acids, antioxidants, reduced reduced glutathione and albumin, resulting in formation of lipid peroxidation products. 
in H2O2. While H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide acts as an early and short acting messenger, lipid peroxidation products were distributed to the tissues via circulation and became late and long lasting messengers. So you have these just these real initial messenger molecules that are formed and you have some long lasting messenger molecules that are formed as a result of ozone therapy. This process stimulates the innate immune system and helps the cell to survive when an injury occurs. That's crucial. That's really cool to see that happening with ozone therapy and we see it again and again and again. It was observed that ozone therapy reduced oxidative stress levels tissue injury, and bacterial translocation rates more effectively than hyperbaric oxygen in an experimental model of necrotizing pancreatitis. This was a different study that they're talking about there. So that's, that's another um, check for ozone therapy. Um, therefore, according to the findings of this study, ozone therapy was proposed as an alternative, let's go up, therapy to improve the outcome of sepsis and its complications in addition to antibiotic therapy. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching 5 Minutes of Proofs, and we'll see you next week.